There it goes. So YouTube is live. Perfect. If you're all just joining us, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Monrovia. Um, if you're watching live right now, you're either on YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook, or even on our website. If you have any questions at any time, please feel free to add your question or comment into the chat box. Or if you're on our website, um, check out the submit a question right below the screen and you will see a box to submit a question. I'll go ahead and do a quick introduction of everyone else. Uh, my name is Levy Sun with the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. I'll go around clockwise on my screen. Go ahead, Pablo. Hi, my name is Pablo and I am the communication specialist here at the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. All right, next up we have James. Hello everyone, I'm James Campbell and I'm one of the assistant vector ecologists here at San Gabriel Vector or San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control Districts. And then next up, we have Mark. My name is Mark Mitchell, and I am, I'm a uh, vector control specialist here with the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito Vector Control. And uh, today, I'm in uh, in uh, Monrovia. Nice. We're reporting live from the city we're in. And then next, we have Christian. Hi, everyone. I'm Christian Luna. I'm one of the education specialists here at the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. And last up, we have Allie. Hi, everyone. I'm Allie Gaspar. I'm the outreach assistant at the district. And I'm currently also in Monrovia, um, live right here in front of Monrovia Library Park, where you can see people in the background setting up for Monrovia Days to celebrate their 135th um, city anniversary. So it's really exciting to see it all. Yeah, in fact, uh, I was just reading about the Monrovia days coming up just this weekend. So it's pretty timely that our Bite Back tour happens in the same week the Monrovia days are happening. Um, I wish I said I had planned it, but that wasn't the case. Um, how we plan our Bite Back tour stops is based off of uh, high risk to um, least amount of risk that our cities may experience. But let's go ahead and start out and talk a little bit about the insects we love to hate, the mosquito. Um, in our district and in our industry, we more we have a love-hate relationship with these things. But one thing we want to really dispel any myths about these mosquitoes is um, that not everything you see in Monrovia is a mosquito. In fact, um, usually around this time, we get a lot more rainfall in the spring and into um, early summer. And usually you might start seeing what looks like giant mosquitoes. Uh, people have described them as mosquito hawks, um, even mosquito eaters. And we well, are here to let you, you know. Levy, if you let me share my screen, I have a photo of a- Oh, nice. Thank you, Pablo. Sure. Yes, absolutely. So these are not, in fact, mosquitoes. Um, as Pablo will show the screen shortly, these are crane flies. Now, crane flies, they uh, are not harmful to us. They don't have a bite, any biting mouth parts to actually um, inflict any kind of bite that a mosquito could have. And they're a sign of a healthy ecosystem. They emerge out of damp areas such as soils or um, any kind of decomposing leaf litter uh, in the grass. And they, while terrifying to see, and yes, you can continue to freak out if you see one, but know that they will not bite you. They're a great food source for birds and if you see one, just shush them out or um, yeah, save those death dealing blows for actual mosquitoes, which as you see on the screen is a lot tinier uh, than the crane fly. And I, if I can add, definitely crane flies are like we've mentioned harmless and I mean, very beneficial to all of us. And just like you see in the photo, there's a huge difference between what mosquitoes look like and what crane flies so those giant things that you see flying around are harmless they're not going to do anything to you absolutely correct thank you pablo uh we do have... yes oh, i was just going to say it's it's really interesting that people um commonly mistake them for mosquitoes i was recently on instagram and an influencer had um freaked out and posted a picture of this bird eating a crane fly and she was freaking out because she thought it was a mosquito so I did my civic duty and was educating her about it. And she responded. I was so happy. I'm like, oh my God, she noticed me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> she also then like went on and posted about how she learned it was a mosquito. So I thought that was pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, nice to hear that you influenced the influencer and educated them about the uh, crane fly versus mosquito. So now that you know that those giant things flying around are not mosquitoes, let's talk about mosquitoes. In fact, um, I want to pivot over to our special guest today to talk a little bit about where we may find these mosquitoes. Um, many of you already know that mosquitoes come from stagnant water sources. They grow in stagnant water. Now, what you all may not know is the reason why mosquitoes bite in the first place that can start this life cycle. So I'm gonna throw it out to the group here. Um, most residents will ask, well, why do mosquitoes bite? Anyone wanna take a first stab at that? Well, if you they saw our- blood. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Pablo, I said they need our blood. And adding to that, if you saw our, which is very timely, our Mosquito Monday post from earlier this week, uh, why they're attracted to our blood is because of our CO2. That's what mosquitoes are uh, smelling and what attract us to us. It's not um, that we um, emit a certain um, odor that is attracting mosquitoes or something. It's the CO2 is how they know, ooh, that's a host that has blood. Thank you, Paul. Exactly. And just in, in the field live, everyone, we have our trustee <laughs> and board president, Becky Shevlin, appearing. Hi, Becky. How are you? Hi there. Hi, Monrovia. Uh, I'm so glad for those of you that are, had the time to tune in this morning to join us in this uh, Bike Back Tour episode. Um, Again, my name is Becky Shevlin. I am on the city council here in Monrovia, and I'm also the board president for the San Diego Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. And I'm so happy to have this opportunity to say hi and uh, to participate with our staff. They do such a great job at getting out there and educating the, the community because that's what it's all about, uh, communication, education, and knowing how to best fight back <laughs> against these uh, mosquitoes. So we're doing everything we can to communicate with you and be a good resource. Um, so please always check in with us. Any questions you might have or issues, uh, everything from mosquito fish to uh, uh, any kind of uh, product that you might want uh, repellents. So that's awesome. my message for the day. <laughs> yeah, awesome, thank Stay you connected. so Stay connected, stay connected. Yes, absolutely. And before you showed up in the beginning, we actually talked about Monrovia days. You want to give the, the residents some in, uh, insight on what's going to happen this weekend? Yes, that is starting tomorrow night. Wow. There are activities here in the park and then on Saturday in the park here. Uh, we won't be having the carnival or the parade, but there will be lots of other um, opportunities to uh, just join in with the community. Lots of music. Um, things like music performances, things like that, some booths and things that you can um, visit. So come on down to uh, the Library Park here uh, in Old Town, Monrovia. Uh, visit some of our restaurants, uh, have a picnic in the park, get some food to go and come out and enjoy the, the great weather. No mosquitoes. <laughs> Thank you, Tina, but no mosquitoes. And uh, have a great time celebrating Monrovia's 135th. Very, very well. Thank you so much for the highlight. And remember, you hear that, mosquitoes? You're not welcome in Monrovia. Yeah, not welcome. <laughs> not, not welcome. Yes. Well, thank you so much, uh, <laughs> Trustee Shevlin. Feel free to stay for a little couple more minutes or stay as long as you would like. Or um, we're just going to go through and just talk a little bit to residents about what we do in your city. Um, yes. Thank you. Yeah, and remember to talk, uh, tip and toss the, uh, those uh water sources in your, your, in your yards. We you might be in a drought, but there still is water out there. So don't forget. That is a great point to make. In fact, the last time we experienced drought in Monrovia, we still saw a lot of mosquitoes because people were still using water around their homes. Now, what yes. we want to show you right now for all the viewers, and if you're just joining us, actually, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Monrovia. We're joined by our board of president and trustee member, Becky Shevlin. We have Ali Gaspar in the background behind her. We have uh, Pablo, our outreach, our communication specialist. Christian, our education specialist. Um, and we got Mark out in the field representing operations and James out in the field as well representing surveillance. So- a Great support staff. 
great support staff. Absolutely. I cannot agree anymore. They definitely are the best of the best here. And I'm glad you mentioned the water sources in people's backyards because people think, well, if we're doing our part in our backyards, what is mosquito control doing um, elsewhere in the public? And I'm going to go ahead and, and throw this over to Mark because uh, he's actually out there right now looking at what seems to be a possible source. Yes. Yeah, so uh, one of the many different uh, sources that we inspect is where water travels. And see if I could turn my camera around. And so we here have a here at a complex at a apartment complex. You have this gutterway, and which drains into this this basin here. And in this location, we have um, a good amount wow. of stagnant water. Wow. And if I can grab a sample for you. So look at all that water just sitting there. And remember everyone who's watching, when was the last time it actually rained significantly? Um, we have a ton of underground storm drains that are miles and miles of them that run through our cities and they're not 100% perfect, which means they may actually hold stagnant water like what you see on the screen uh, that Mark is showing. You know, I just wanted to kind of chime in there. Um, we commonly will see water held in pipes like this due to um, seismic activity shifting the pipes. So there might be uh, hard for the water to flow through cleanly. Also, there's possibility that there's large debris blocking the tube further down as well. And you will see, uh, oddly enough, these uh, um, blockages uh, kind of shift. <clears throat> All right, Mark, we see you dip the water. You got anything in there? Well, I got a, a couple larvae, but uh, quite a bit few of uh, egg grafts. So the mm -hmm. eggs have been laid here, the mosquitoes. Uh, so this is definitely a location where they're going to be developing. But um, like James was saying, there is quite a bit of debris that's preventing this water from draining out. And so the water would just sit here and it's just a, it's a perfect uh, habitat for the mosquitoes. Wow. And um, in approximately how many days would you say the, the mosquitoes would emerge are from egg to adult in that drain there? This drain here, a lot of it depends on the weather, uh, but the weather we recently <laughs> been having, I would say from the time it's uh, laid as an egg, you got about seven to 10 days before they're hatching out as adults. So seven, 10 days, you can see hundreds of mosquitoes flying out of this if you hadn't caught this. so. Thank you, Mark, for catching that. But let's just say, you know, we can't prevent 100% of mosquitoes from emerging in our cities. That's just the nature of, of where we live. So we do need a way to monitor all these mosquitoes flying around. Uh, let me throw it over now to James, who represents um, surveillance. Now, you obviously work in surveillance to monitor mosquito populations. What exactly does that mean? What do you do? A lot of uh, what we do, like the, the main portion is our surveillance, which means we go out and we set traps around the district in a key locations that are shown historical breeding in the past or historical abundance in the past, as well as um, historical evidence of mosquito uh, disease or prevalence of West Nile virus. Um, <clears throat> and one of the methods or two of the methods you'll commonly see us use are these two traps I have set up for you guys here. Now, oh, sorry, let me position that. This first one here is called a gravid trap. And this is, uh, was given the name, the gravid trap due to the fact that it's designed to try to capture gravid mosquitoes. <clears throat> gravid mosquitoes aren't just mosquitoes that have taken a blood mill. These are mosquitoes that have now taken that blood mill, consumed the protein from it and turned that metabolic energy into eggs. And uh, what you'll see is mosquitoes will commonly increase their egg production by around 500 times once they've consumed blood. And our trap here is trying to mimic stagnant water and then it draws them in as they try to lay their egg rafts into that water. So I'll show you, get a little bit closer here for you guys. See if you can't look down. You can see there's water at the base of the trap. Oh yeah. And it might might be hard to see, but there is a pipe coming out from the bottom of the trap and you might see the water shimmer and move every now and then. That's actually the air trying to suck up the water or anything that's in there. And what will happen is the mosquitoes will get pulled up into, sorry, let me 
back up a little bit into this box here, which has a net on the bottom just to secure the opening. And all of that is powered by a nice little six volt battery that we keep uh, maintained and charged throughout the season. And that guy right there is our main workhorse for trapping. Um, it's used to capture uh, multiple species of mosquitoes. We are able to capture 80s mosquitoes or new invasive mosquitoes in them as well. But our next trap is actually designed to uh, more readily capture 80s mosquitoes. And that would be our trap here. You could see it. It's like a, it looks like a giant bucket almost or bag. And that's a, essentially what it is. It's a collapsible trap here. And if you notice on the top, we have this black pipe here. And that's actually the entry point where the mosquitoes are drawn in. And if you notice this bolt, that means the lid is flipped open and the trap is currently active. If I move that off, you can see it falls down. And that's a safeguard. Oh, it kind of slipped there. But that's a safeguard to um, allow the trap to stay closed and keep mosquitoes um, within the net, even if the power goes out. And one other cool portion of this trap is this little lure here. This is the main kind of uh, attractant that this trap uses. 80s are uh, very um, notorious for um, loving to be around humans. They kind of adapted all their habits to being near humans, especially uh, one that we don't commonly see, which is the Australian backyard mosquito. It actually has gained the habit of following you into your house and it will readily find any kind of sink or most commonly a toilet and it will use the reservoir of the toilet to start breeding. <clears throat> Very interesting. Let me just stop you right there. For anyone watching, uh, this is the bite back tour in the city of Monrovia. You just heard James representing our surveillance department talking about two of our main traps that we use. And if you're watching on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or on our website, feel free to drop in a question or a comment. I'll be monitoring that and I'll pass on any questions we get to our experts here on the show. Um, just really quick, uh, James, so you're saying that one trap is better to trap um, one group or, ge or genus of mosquitoes, correct? So the one you just showed us is for 80s mosquitoes? Yes. Um, yeah, you'll commonly see that if we'll use different styles of traps to either capture um, adults in different stages of their life. So you have a, a CO2 trap, which looks to try to capture mosquitoes that are seeking blood mills. And that's commonly used in wilderness areas where there might be an overabundance of water sources. So our gravid trap isn't gonna be as attractive to gravid mosquitoes. Okay. And then um, the gravid mosquito is more, or gravid traps more generalized because it's just looking to um, kind of use that egg laying habit against them. And then our BG is set up to capture the 80s, which is commonly using uh, human scent to um, find its host. Got it. So uh, it sounds like we have a very comprehensive set of tools to capture all these different types or groups of mosquitoes out there. So for those of you watching, uh, if you aren't aware of the name 80s, uh, those are the little black and white mosquitoes that are quite aggressive when they bite in the day. Um, news media have called them ankle biters. Uh, they're the ones that you walk outside to grab your mail and within 30 seconds you get four or five bites. Um, so we're out there monitoring for these and they are uh, the same ones that can uh, spread Zika, yellow fever, dengue fever. Uh, they're, they're no fun to be around. Pablo here just shared an image uh, of two of them. One's the yellow fever mosquito, the other one's the um, Asian tiger mosquito. Uh, we just, to simplify it, call them 80s mosquitoes. Um, Mark, I believe you have a, uh, a bit of a claim to fame. Weren't you one of the, or were the first to identify eight, a large population of 80s in San Gabriel Valley? In San Gabriel Valley is uh, responding to a service request and the resident actually had a dead specimen in a baggie and I just uh, recognized it right away. And um, during the inspection of her property, uh, ended up locating and identifying some flying insects and, and which were more 80s. And that's, that's pretty much been the start of uh, 2011. And that's amazing how fast they spread since then. I've heard countless residents in Monrovia and throughout San Gabriel Valley who are complaining about these 80s mosquitoes. And one distinct characteristic 
between mos- the, these 80s mosquitoes versus the native ones is their egg laying behavior. Uh, these 80s mosquitoes will lay their eggs individually stuck on sides of containers and even plant stalks rooted in water. Um, and they are just uh, passed around in our community. So uh, that's why we had a big shift. If any of resident is watching, uh, we had a big shift in what we tell people about getting rid of stagnant water. No longer are we monitoring big pools of water like, like um, swimming pools. Now we're looking at small sources and that has really allowed us to hone in some of the stuff we do, especially in education. Um, Christian is our education specialist here joining us. And um, Christian, you wanna talk a little bit about what kind of stuff you use to teach students about where to find these 80s mosquitoes around their home? Sure, yeah. So we actually have multiple programs um, that are you know, specifically NGSS aligned um, and they're free for teachers to bring into their classrooms. So we have um, our typical types of presentations um, through our Mosquito Intelligence Academy. And those are, like I said, NGSS aligned programs, but we also have um, two citizen science programs. So that is, uh, the first one is VIP, the Vector Inspector Program. Um, And this is for um, K through Eight. And so students go into their backyards and they look for um, stagnant water sources and then they are able to submit those sources to us and we let them know what we find. And we also have GRID um, and GRID, as you can see in that little black cup, um, students are actually clearing their yards and looking and um, try putting out this mosquito lure to see if mosquitoes uh, will lay their eggs there and then they'll submit that to us and um, and so then that way they're really helping contribute to our public health operations which is really really awesome Um, I totally wish I had this when I was younger Um, but the latest addition that we have is our escape room Um, and so that's a really good way for students to learn Um, this is specifically for middle and high school students but to get experience trying to solve uh, public health mysteries, right, and outbreaks. So we have one that's called The Deadly Mystery, More Than a Murder of Crows. Um, And we can actually go through one of the puzzles in this if you'd like. Yeah, I'm definitely interested. Let's check this out, Christian. I'm Um, ready. All right, you're ready to escape? So um, yeah, so, so this is, it has, about 10 different puzzles, but we can do one. Um, So I will become the facilitator. (laughs) Um, All right, so mosquitoes grow in containers filled with stagnant water. As a group, you all identify 10 items that should be inspected for stagnant water samples um, to help solve the outbreak. I will collect samples from each item if water is present. Go ahead. All right, for everyone watching, if you're um, like tuning into the Bite Back Tour, if you wanna join in, feel free to add in the comments, any kind of sources you may see, and I will point them out for you. Yes, help us out. All right, I guess I'll the start rain first. Barrel. Oh, I was gonna sorry. say rain barrel, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was a little eager. <laughs> Sample collected. The bucket for sure, the one by the tree. Sample collected. The pot. A pot or pot sa- sample collected. These are good. What about um, the table in the background there? Ooh, no sample collected. This is not a potential source of mosquitoes. Ah. What about the dog? Um, Can the dog breed mosquitoes? Ooh, <laughs> no sample collected. This is not a potential source of mosquitoes. I would hope those samples were collected from the dog. <laughs> Maybe there was other samples, but not mosquitoes. But I, I, I think it's important to note, right, that dogs can also get vector-borne diseases, correct? Oh, that's correct. Yes, yeah. yes, that's a good point. Um, yes, and uh, 80s is a confident vector of dog heartworm as well. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yes. But no, no samples of mosquito larvae were collected from the dog. Let's be clear about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's one. Come on, the, guys. <laughs> uh, the rain roof gutter. Oh, yes. Uh, the rain gutters. Sample collected. Commonly forgotten. The, the right, toys. 
toys huh? sample collected five what about that tarp is that a tarp that's hiding back there Ooh, on the table good eye sample collected the cooler next to that round white table there sample collected uh the bin in the back behind the tree sample collected the dog you already named that water can. watering can sample collected the dog bowl with the water in it sample collected i believe that is 10. so mission accomplished to the lab for sample analysis and mosquito identification. And so from there, we would have students actually, uh, we have some photos of um, mosquito eggs, and then they would have to identify the egg to species um, and go from there to try to solve the outbreak. Very cool. Um, thank you, Christian. And now if I were a teacher or, you know what, I want to book this myself. So yeah. how can teachers book this? Oh, that's a great question. So if you go onto our uh, website, which is vector, www.vectoreducation.org, um, it looks exactly like this. Thank you, Pablo. You're so prepared. Um, and so they would just actually go on here, go onto the website, um, and they can explore all of our different programs. Um, and there is one uh, in the ribbon, you'll see that there's escape rooms, but they can click on that and they can sign up for the escape rooms um, or or like I said, any of our other programs, they're all found here and you just click on book and we're here for you. Very cool, thank you, Christian. If you're just joining us, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Monrovia. We had our trustee and board president, Becky Shevlin, um, up here with us, but we also have Christian, Pablo, Mark, Ali, and James on here. We're about to wrap it up in the next couple of minutes, but let's talk about something that a lot of residents are, are always asking us questions about, and that is repellents. Mm -hmm. But not so much repellents, it's more what can this repellent do versus that one? So I always like to open this up with some repellent myths and facts. And I'll, go get, I'll start with one I hear often, and that's using dryer sheets. I've heard residents say, <laughs> I'm gonna take dryer sheets and rub it all over my face, my arms, my legs, stuff it in my shirt, and hope it works. Um, the answer is uh, not really. Uh, you may be able to mask your scent for maybe a couple seconds, maybe a couple minutes, but pretty soon your true self will show and you'll sweat <laughs> off whatever smell the, 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 the uh, dryer sheet left on you. And on top of that, uh, you can't escape um, your own biology. You need to breathe. When you breathe out CO2, mosquitoes will find you. So unless you stuff the dryer sheets in your mouth and try and hide your seat in some way, <laughs> you're not going to get very far from mosquitoes. So any other myths that people uh, come across? I think a common one is the, um, the little clip-on fans. I've seen those are quite popular. And while it has a good intention and good idea because mosquitoes are weak flyers, um, they don't exactly work because that little fan is too small. And if you clip it on, for example, like your belt loop, I know people tend to put it there. Um, it's not really protecting you or creating this quote unquote invisible force field that it claims to, to create. Um, it's very uh, funneled in the fan that it, in the wind that it's creating. So um, the fan doesn't really protect you in that sense. Like Levy was mentioning, it's something really physically that you need on your skin. Um, another good tip too is if you're in a patio setting or something, having a ceiling fan running can also help or help deter uh, mosquitoes from flying in the area that you're in. Right. So every layer of protection is helpful, but the one key thing is using repellent. So uh, I would say if you're looking for repellent, uh, look for any one of the four uh, EPA registered ingredients. That's DEET, which is a gold standard. IR3535, picaridin, and an up-and-comer and really popular ingredient is oil of lemon eucalyptus, also known as PMD on the label. If you're walking through the aisle and you're overwhelmed by all the marketing and all the products on there, just pick up a bottle and just look for any one of those ingredients and you should be good. Uh, for kids, uh, talk to the pediatrician, make sure uh, they recommended one that can work for your kids. Uh, but a key thing to remember is don't spray your kid in the face. I see that way too or often. Or yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely don't <laughs> spray yourself in the face. Um, 
but make sure you follow label instructions with repellent. So we're gonna go ahead and round out this tour stop in Monrovia. Well, you know, oh, yeah, one thing ahead. I wanted to bring up really quick too is to remember that um, the repellents that are sold are kind of sold uh, similar to um, suntan lotion where they have kind of varying degrees of strength. So the stronger you get, the less often you have to apply it. That is one thing to take into consideration. Thank you for that, James. Yeah, and the EPA actually mentions that the percentage you see on the bottle isn't how, how awesome and effective it is right then and there. It is about longevity. So 90%, you're looking at less time to apply. Maybe you have to apply maybe uh, eight hours later. Um, but something that's 5% DEET, you might have to reapply every hour or so. Uh, good point, James. And if you are wearing sunscreen, make sure to apply your sunscreen first, then the repellent. Absolutely correct. Thank you, Christian. Um, all right, we're going to go through rounds of just sign-offs. Um, I'll start with our in the field uh, guests from different departments. So, um, Mark, any last words for Monrovia? I uh, just want to just really emphasize of, of the prevention from the mosquitoes. Uh, any stagnant water on your property, family member's property, just a tip, toss, and protect yourself. Thank you for that, Mark. All right, James, any last words for our residents? Uh, I completely agree with Mark. You want to tip, toss, and drain any st stagnant standing water and any unused containers, as well as use repellents. And I also encourage all residents who own pets to keep your pets on a regular regimen of uh, flea medication. It helps safeguard against more than just fleas themselves. Okay, well, then dial back to our communications team here. Um, Christian, any last words for our, our residents? I just want to invite teachers again to sign up for our programs. Monrovia is one of the cities that has a uh, or has a few vector inspectors of the year for last year. So, um, you know, we really just want you all to sign up with us and um, help us make your classroom as lively as you would love. Right. And Pablo. And I just want to remind uh, residents, just like we mentioned earlier when we started the bite back tour today, uh, is if you see a crane fly, those giant things flying around uh, your lights or your porch light, those are crane flies. They're harmless. They don't do anything to you. Uh, you should actually be excited to see a crane fly. That means you have a healthy ecosystem around you. Mosquitoes are very small. Mosquitoes fit on the thumb of your finger. So if it's larger than your thumb, it's not a mosquito. Very good. Thank you for that tip. Finally, Ali. Hi, everyone. Well, you can see that I changed locations really quickly. Um, let me just put my screen. I just want to remind everyone that we, um, about our education program um, for EcoHealth. You can sign up online, as Christian said, at vectoreducation.org. And this is actually our brand new wrapped car. Um, so you can see we have our EcoHealth logo and also um, characters from one of our programs. And um, you guys are the first to see it. No one has seen it yet. So congratulations, Monrovia. Wow. Um, and then I also have a little surprise for you guys. Um, inside, as they were saying, make sure to wear insect repellent. And here are just a few samples. Um, and as I said before, you can find it anywhere in the store pretty much, as long as they have an outdoor or gardening section. And then also to remember when you guys are outside in your yards or in your friend's yards or family's yards, to always tip and toss any container. Um, these are just some examples. If you see this, you wanna make sure it's empty, um, put away or turned over. Right. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. All right, thank you everyone so much for joining us to the, at the Bite Back Tour in the city of Monrovia. Next week, we are here again, Thursdays at 11. Uh, we'll be in the city of La Puente. So tune in next week at the same time. If you're watching on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or our website, tune in again. And we'll see you um, next week, possibly. Stay safe and stay healthy, everyone.